Folks, welcome to Fiddlehead Fiddle Lessons. Do you have trouble remembering tunes and their titles? If so, I want to offer a helpful tip, strategy for remembering tunes. I just call it fingerprinting. All it is is you say the name of the tune, Arkansas Traveler. You play a little bit of the beginning, and then you play it in your head. Just see if you can visualize it. That's it. You say it, play it, hear it. So I'm going to go into more detail about how to do this and how you can extend that practice in the rest of the lesson. So one question you might have about the process is how much exactly of the beginning do I play? The short answer is whatever you need. If it helps you to remember the, the, the whole tune, then do it. So for some people, they might just need, for Arkansas Traveler, the first few notes. Oh, I got it now, now I remember. But you might need more, so I would say a good rule of thumb is maybe the first bar will be enough to trigger the rest of the tune. And that's what I call this little piece, the trigger. Okay, so. But maybe you need a little bit more, so maybe the first quarter. Now you got it, okay? So there's that. Um, say it before you play it. So the first step, say it. In addition to saying Arkansas Traveler, some addition, if you're into this idea, I think you should at least try what I've said so far. But if you're into it, you can include a little more information here, like Arkansas Traveler, A part, and then just play the A part, and then do the fingerprint for the B part. Arkansas Traveler, B part. And then hear it in your head. And when you're doing that process, it's called audiation, which is a newer term, which just, it's kind of like harnessing the natural, the natural mental process of hearing music and hearing audio in your brain. You know how like sometimes you remember a conversation or, or you remember your favorite song. So you do this without knowing it, audiation. What I'm trying to do with Fiddlehead is to get people to practice this in a very active way. So you harness that so you can improve your ability to hear music play in tune and to remember songs. So that's, I, and I've done a lot of lessons, or at least one or two more on finger, finger printing, but I'm doing it again because I'm adding this key element, the hearing it in your head. So say it, play it, hear it. I thought it was worth doing it again for that. So anyhow, so that's the basic process for doing finger printing on a single tune. And by the way, I'm going to get to a few other things at the end besides fingerprinting on how to remember songs. But so say you've been playing for a while, you've been playing a whole session, like you've been play, you maybe played for an hour, say, and you've played three tunes, Arkansas Traveler, Blackest Crow, and Swallowtail Jig. So what you can do now is use fingerprinting to recap what you've done that day. So you can go and be like, okay, it's the end of the day, Arkansas Traveler. <laughs> Got it, okay, Blackest Crow. Blackest Crow B part. Oh wait, I don't remember the B part. So if that happens, and it probably will for, some, for a lot of the tunes, don't be upset with yourself. Just just go, look it up, look up the tabs, get it back in your ear and play it again. Then move on to the th whatever the third tune you did, which was Swallowtail Jig. Swallowtail Jig, A part. All right, and then after you've done all those, for any that you couldn't remember, just go and do those again. Be kind to yourself. It's, it takes you a little while, no worries, and, and, and after you've done all of them and you've you spent a little extra time on the hard ones, then move on. And then that's just a general rule of thumb with this. When, if there's some that are more difficult for you, then practice them more frequently, the fingerprints, that is. 
help you remember it. And it's actually a learning principle I just learned about called spaced repetition. It's used to learn language where you, if you get something wrong, then you're given that question again sooner. And if you get it right, you may get it later because it's sort of assuming you don't need it as much. So anyhow, so that's the whole, oh, I had one more thing to say about the fingerprinting. So you can also add, if you're really, if you're trying to learn more about the theory and notation behind music, you can tie that in as well. You could say Arkansas Traveler, real, which is the kind of tune it is, real in D major. And so now you're kind of, if you are learning that stuff, you can use the fingerprinting process to tie everything together in a cosmic knot of fiddling goodness. Arkansas Traveler in D major, a real, I messed up the order, A part, so many things to say. And then tack on other things too, like Arkansas Traveler uh, from the American South folk tune that's been passed on for 400 years. It started in Holland and you yell it all and then you play it. Whatever, whatever helps you remember it, I always find silly, stupid associations to actually help remember people's names and stuff. And if I try to do it, I usually remember their name. If I'm maybe not in a good mood, then I'm not doing weird things like that. Okay, so um, just a few other closing tips on how to remember tunes. And that's why we're here, just to play music and to get to the point where you don't need tabs, you don't need sheet music, you just want to remember it, somebody starts to play it. So another thing to do is to just simply keep a list of every tune you've learned and review that list, go over it, and then just every week say, I'm going to just play a tune I know is rusty. And, or maybe it's for you a few tunes at a time. This week I'm going to do five, the first five tunes as review. That'll help you to keep the tunes you care about fresh. And if there are tunes that you're not that into on your list, you keep it there so you know, but move on, you know, don't bother with those. And the last tip I'll give you, another very simple thing that you're probably already doing. Anytime you learn a tune, listen to it a lot, every day. Listen to multiple versions, and even if it's, just take it in. Just kind of constantly have that reinforced in your brain in different ways. And if you're learning from a specific source, like you're learning Kevin Burke's version of a tune, or you're learning the fiddlehead version of a tune, then definitely listen to a lot of the exact thing you're trying to learn. So I hope that all makes sense. Hope that was useful. And if you found it fun, then click the like button the subscribe button and the notification bell. That's about it. Enjoy. Let me know how it goes and see you next time. Go to fiddlehead.com for a progressive step-by-step -step course outline, color-coded tabs, play-along tracks, sheet music, and much more. Thanks for And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.